Okay, here's an example of computing eigenvalues and eigenvectors for a 3 by 3 matrix. All right, so the conventional way is to take the determinant of the matrix minus lambda times the identity. And what that means is that you put minus lambda on each entry on the diagonal this way. So I've only changed from here to here by adding minus lambda to each diagonal entry. Okay, then we can do row or column expansion to find the determinant. So that's what I have down here. Uh, here I did a row expansion on the first row. Notice this minus 2 minus lambda is here. Here's the determinant of the submatrix. This uh, minus 4 becomes a plus 4 because of the checkerboard alternating of signs. Here's the submatrix here. This 2 corresponds to this 2. And then here is the submatrix here. All right, so we can evaluate these determinants by the usual 2 by 2 rule. Uh, diagonal entries minus the uh, off diagonal ent product of off diagonal entries. And I did that here. And then simplify these expressions gives me these polynomials here. All right, now at this point, it pays to do things systematically. Of course, it pays to do things systematically all the way through. But what you need to think about is this is a polynomial in lambda, and it has terms proportional to lambda cubed, lambda squared, lambda, and constant terms. So what we need to do is collect these terms according to the power of lambda that they multiply. Let's think first about lambda cubed terms. Lambda cubed, well, let's see. If you look at this second term and this third term, there are no lambda cubed terms. So let's focus in on this. Now in this product, the only way to get a lambda cubed term is select the minus lambda from here and the lambda squared from there. So altogether, I'm going to get minus lambda times lambda squared or minus lambda cubed. That's the only lambda cubed term. Okay, consider the lambda squared terms. Again, from this part and from this part, there are no lambda squared terms. But we can get lambda squared terms from here. How can we do that? Well, if we choose the minus 2 here, we'll get a lambda squared if we multiply the minus 2 times the lambda squared. So that gives me my minus 2 lambda squared here. I'm going to get another lambda squared term when I multiply this minus lambda times this minus 6 lambda. That's going to be minus 1 times minus 6 or plus 6. So that's where this plus 6 term comes from. So you see what I'm doing? I'm looking at the terms obtained by this product. And I look at the minus 2 and I say, what terms will give me a lambda squared? And that's this term. So I do minus 2 times 1. That gives me minus 2. Then I look at this term and I say, what terms will give me lambda squared? So I have minus lambda times minus 6 lambda gives me a plus 6. So that has plus 6. Altogether, that gives me 4 lambda squared. Now let's look at the lambda terms. Well, what terms are going to give me a lambda? Well, let's do it the same way. I think I did it in slightly different order here. Let me just erase this and I'll do it again so you can see what I'm doing. All right. So let's do the same systematic method that I did before. Let me get my tablet here. All right. So first of all, let's look at the terms that multiply lambda that result from this minus 2. Well, as minus 2 times 1 is not going to give me, minus 2 times minus 6 lambda is going to give me a lambda term. So minus 2 times minus 6 is going to be 8. So I should just put a 8 here. That's the first one. Then let's look at this minus lambda. Well, minus lambda multiplied by the 1 is going to give me a minus lambda term. Minus lambda multiplied the others gives me higher order that I don't care about. So this is going to be minus 1. All right, now let's see what other lambda terms we have. <clears throat> From here, the only lambda term will be 4 times 2, or 8. So they get another plus 8. And then from here, I have 2 times 4, which is another 8. Let's see, 2 times 4, which is another 8. So I get another plus 8 here. Now, 
Now, going back here, I see that here I have 27, so I must have made a mistake. Let's go back over again. Now, if you arrange these systematically, you should be able to find your mistakes when you go back and correct. So let's go back and see. This first 8, where did that come from? Well, I did the minus 2 times minus 6. All right, so I said uh, times minus 6, and somehow I got a uh, 8. So, of course, that's not correct. It should be a 12. So let me go back and correct that. It should be 12. It's important to write your stuff in a way that you can correct it. All right, and then let's check the minus 1. Here we have minus 1 here. That's good. Here we have 8 here. That's good. Here we have 8 here. That's good. So here we do, in fact, get 28 minus 1 or 27. And those are all the terms that multiply lambda. Now let's try the next one and see if we can do this in a similar way. All right, and so let's follow this out. Now the constant terms from the first group here, I have the minus 2 times 1, so that's minus 2. Okay. Then from here, I'm going to have 4 times minus 18, so that's minus 4 times 18. I think that's minus 72. And here I have 2 times minus 8, which is minus 16. Okay. And that gives me minus 90. All right, so I've gotten the terms one by one. It's an important skill to be able to do this. And then I can group them together in a single polynomial. Minus lambda cubed plus 4 lambda squared plus 27 lambda minus 90. And to get the eigenvalues, you want to set this polynomial equal to 0. Now, usually when you deal with polynomials, you want the leading term to be a plus 1. So I multiply the whole polynomial by minus 1, and I get this. So now we have to find the roots. So you go back to some facts that you learned from algebra. Right? Uh, according to this form, the product of the roots is 90. Right? So each root must divide 90. Furthermore, the sum of the roots is minus 4. The term after the leading term will always be the sum of the roots if the leading term is 1. So that's the sum of the roots. Right? So um, 90 has a lot of factors. Suppose by trial and error you find that 3 works. So you can plug in 3 and see that uh, if I put 3 in for lambda, I get 3 cubed, or 27, minus 9 times 3 squared, which is minus 4 times 9, uh, minus 27 times 3, plus 90. Work that out, you get 0. So this one you'd have to do by trial and error. But once you find one root, the whole thing breaks apart because I can take my polynomial, this is my original polynomial, and divide by lambda minus 3, long division, again, a skill you learned in uh, uh, college algebra, and do the long division. I get lambda squared minus lambda minus 30. You can solve this by quadratic formula, or here, let me show the whole calculation here. Uh, uh, here's the whole long division calculation. Maybe you need to refresh yourself on how to do this. But once I have this polynomial, you can either use quadratic formula or use a simple factoring. Here in this case, this factors to a lambda minus 6, lambda plus 5, and I get this fully factored form for my polynomial. So that means that my eigenvalues are 3, 6, and minus 5. All right. So at this point, the fun is just beginning. Let's plug in these val eigenvalues in turn and find the null space. All right, so if I plug in lambda equals 3, this was my original matrix that I copied before with the lambdas included. If I plug in lambda equals 3, then I get this matrix here. And then you just bite the bullet and do the row reduction. Now, if you end up not getting a singular matrix, then you know you've made a mistake because the eigenvalues are specifically chosen so that you will get a singular matrix you need to have a solution for the null space of this matrix. Okay, So here I've done the row reduction, and I do get a singular matrix. And here is my general solution. So that means that I have my eigenvalue, my eigenvector, minus 2, 3, 1, uh, 4, lambda equal 3. Right. Then you can look at the notes on one note. I do the same thing for the other two eigenvalues. This one gives me, whoops, how did I jump there? This one gives me 
Uh, this is for lambda equals 6. I did the row reduction. I get the uh, null space. Here I get that. And I could, I could also do this. I can multiply this whole vector by 16. So I could write this or minus 1 and then 16 times 3 eighths would be 6. And then here I'd have 16 uh, is an eigenvector for lambda equals 6. And I did the same thing for lambda equals minus 5. And I get this one down here. So here I have uh, minus 2 minus 1, 1 is an eigenvector for lambda equals, what was this, minus 5? Yeah, minus 5. Now, how do you know that you've done this correctly? Boy, this is sloppy. Let me erase this and do it again. Sorry. This should be a minus 1. How do you know you've done this correctly? Well, a way to check that you could, that's a good thing to do when you're taking a quiz to make sure you got the right answer is check. You can uh, it, confirm if I call this vector v, confirm that a v is equal to lambda v. All right. So, for instance, my lambda, uh, uh, my my a was up here. Let's go up here and see what my a was. It was. Let me just copy it again. I can do that, and uh, just copy, and go down. Hopefully, it did copy. Where's my mouse? My mouse is lost. Oh, it's over there. Okay. Okay. Right, let's see if I can, let's see if it pays. And it does. So here's my A, and I should be able to see, and my, um, so my V was minus 2, minus 1, 1. And let's go ahead and do it. So here I'm going to get Minus 2 times minus 2, let's just do it out, it's 4. And then here I have plus 4, plus, and then 2 times 1 is 2. And that's the first entry. Then second entry, second row times column is going to be 4. And then this is going to be minus 1, plus 2. And then this one is going to be, uh, next one is going to be minus 8. And then here I'm going to have minus 2, plus 5. And I end up with 10, 5, and minus 5, which is exactly equal to minus 5 times my original 2 minus 1, 1. You see that here's my 2 minus 1, 1. Here's my 2 minus 1, 1. I'm in good shape, and my eigenvalue checks out. So uh, just uh, step by step. Uh, find ways to correct your calculations, uh, to check your calculations, make sure you haven't made a mistake. So that's it.